Peace Negotiations, Chapter 4 A good night's sleep Liam did not get. When he got back to his room, Luna was sitting outside, looking impatient. Unsurprisingly, she leered at him as he approached. I should start keeping count of how many times I get glared at. Liam didn't know if there was an official record for the most glares received in a single week, but if there was, he was well on his way of breaking it. Princess Luna? He said with a slight head bow. Human? She acknowledged. What took you so long? Surely you and my sister weren't talking for such a lengthy period. She went to bed a few minutes after you left. She said I could stay in and read in her office, so I took her up on her offer. Sorry, I didn't realize that you'd be waiting for me. What else would I do, human? I am not allowed to fulfill my duties as a princess until this punishment is over with. Luna was clearly mad about her current situation, but it didn't show in her voice. In fact, the only way that Liam could tell that she wasn't serenely calm was by that glare of hers. I guess you have a point. Uh, where did Chrysalis go? I believe that she has retired for the night. She said dismissively. What did my sister have to say? She was just telling me that I didn't have to take part in your punishment if I didn't want to. She looked a little surprised at that. She studied Liam for a moment, looking for signs of deceit. What? I was not expecting you to be so... forthcoming about your conversation with my sister. What reason would I have to not tell you? Instead of answering, she asked her own question. And I assume you took her offer? Nope. She looked surprised at that too. Why would you refuse? She asked. Weren't you the one complaining that I did nothing but read? This gives me another way to fill out my time. Shouldn't you be happy that I'm doing something? Her eyes hardened further, and Liam thought better of what he was saying. He was playing with fire here, and they both knew it. Though she did kind of imply that I could back out later if I wanted to. So you're saying that if I can get you to back out of this agreement, I can return to my duties? I don't think that's how that works, Princess. If you run me off, I'm sure Celestia will stick you with someone else. It's gonna happen either way. That brought a sour taste to Luna's mouth. Yes, I thought that would be too convenient. Before more could be said, she stood and started walking down the hallway. Come. She commanded. Why? Where are we going? If my sister thinks that the two of us need to become friends, then we shall become friends. Come. She commanded again. Princess, can't this wait? I understand that you just woke up, but I haven't. She paused and turned back to look at him. And what, pray tell, would you suggest that I do with my entire night since I cannot get any work done? Uh, I, I don't know, take a day off, relax and read a book. I can suggest a few good ones, if you're interested. She didn't look very amused by a suggestion. The sooner we finish this punishment, the sooner I can return to fulfilling my duties as a princess. Now come. She said, as she continued down the hall. Liam glanced at his room, then at the departing princess. He sighed. He supposed one missed a night of sleep wouldn't kill him. He'd stayed up all night reading or doing some homework many times in the past. Sure, it might have messed up with the sleep schedule, but said sleep schedule wasn't exactly stable to begin with. He turned from the room and followed after Luna. They walked in silence as she led Liam through the many halls of the castle, until they arrived in front of the familiar doors to the dining hall. <sighs> right, she did just wake up. I guess it makes sense that she'd be hungry. They went inside and took seats opposite of each other. It wasn't long before one of the waiting staff came to take Luna's order. What can I get you for this evening, your highness? I am in the mood to try something new. Human, what would you suggest? Oh, well, that's something I wasn't expecting. What did a princess of the night even eat when she woke up at nine in the evening? This will probably sound stupid. What, what kind of food do you usually eat when you get up? Breakfast foods. Right, uh, good to know. Liam thought for a moment. Celestia liked simple things, and he didn't exactly know what breakfast food would count as fancy, so he went with something basic. Have you ever tried peanut butter toast? I have not. What is it? it uh, it, it's peanut butter on toast. I thought that was self-explanatory. Luna's glare returned with a vengeance. Need we remind thee that we were gone for a very, very long time? She nearly growled, starting to slip into her old way of speaking. The waiter flinched back slightly at her tone. Seeing the reaction that she'd caused in the waiter, Luna calmed herself. I know a toast is human, however I have not heard of peanut butter. It was likely invented while I was... away. I've been making it a point to try foods that have come about after my banishment. Well, now Liam just felt like an ass. Oh, I'm sorry, Princess. I wasn't trying to insult you. I'll... I'll try and be more considerate in the future. I'm not great at describing flavor, but peanut butter toast is quick, cheap, and tastes good. It's gotten me through plenty of mornings back in high school when I'd overslept. Very well. I shall take the human suggestion. She told the waiter. 
And to drink? Luna looked at me again. Milk is good to wash it down. The waiter nodded and wrote down the order, before looking to me as well. And what can I get for you, sir? I'll take the same, but coffee instead of milk. Would you like the coffee in any particular way? Caffeinated. And bring out the whole pot, please. Liam didn't even like coffee, but something told him that he'd need it. He could already feel the Sandman trying to sneak up on him, and he doubted Luna would appreciate him dozing off on her. The waiter disappeared back into the kitchen, leaving the pair alone once again. It only took a few minutes for the food to be prepared and brought out on simple plates. As Liam happily dug in, Luna took a moment to inspect what was on her plate. She lifted a piece of toast in her magic and took a bite, clearly savoring the taste. She swallowed and took a swig of the milk that she had also received before speaking. This peanut butter is quite good, human. Your suggestion was not ill-advised. With that, she continued to eat, seemingly ignoring Liam's existence in favor of enjoying her meal. Honestly, that was probably the nicest thing that she'd said to him up to that point. Knowing it would just ruin the moment, Liam said nothing, and just enjoyed the almost compliment. When they'd both finished, their dishes were taken away, but Liam asked the waiter to leave the pot of coffee. So, what now? He asked. I am... unsure. My sister wishes for me to make friends, and seeing as you are apparently good at doing just that, what would you suggest that we do? He hummed and thought. If the goal was to make friends, they'd better go where there were people for her to befriend. That limited their options greatly just based on the fact that Luna had a nocturnal sleep schedule. Most ponies would be going to bed around now, and he highly doubted the Princess of the Night would be willing to switch to a diurnal lifestyle for this. Until Liam spoke with Celestia about his current house arrest status, leaving the castle grounds was out of the question. The only place that he could think of that fit his criteria was the Night Guard barracks. But he didn't think they'd be comfortable having their boss, especially one like Luna just hanging around all the time. That really didn't leave much for them to do, so Liam tried to improvise. Uh, Princess, do you happen to know any card games? Okay, admittedly it was a weak attempt, and Liam would totally blame tiredness if asked, but he really couldn't think of anything to do on such short notice. Luna's brow raised slightly. No, playing cards are another invention that came about after my banishments. Though I am aware of their existence, I have no experience with them. Liam nodded in acknowledgement, playing the deck of cards that he'd been carrying with him out of his pocket. In his near-constant boredom within the castle, he had found playing cards to be a surprisingly versatile way to kill time, whether it be by playing solitaire, practicing sleight-of-hand tricks, or just flicking cards of fruit. He was especially getting good at that last one. In a pinch, they also made good bookmarks. Then perhaps you'd be interested in learning. Liam trudged in the direction of his room. Looking out the window revealed that the sun had risen over the horizon some time ago. He groaned in exhaustion. The playing cards had gone over surprisingly well with Luna. She was interested enough to at least tolerate his presence for a few hours. Eventually, their limited conversation had changed to the subject of board games. Apparently chess was an old game in both of their worlds, as Luna has played it before her banishment to the moon. Naturally, the pair found a board and played a few games, in which the Night Princess had destroyed Liam over and over again. He'd mentioned some of the games that he used to play on Earth, and it seems to pique her interest. At least we found some common ground, Liam thought. He figured that even if he got out of the castle, he could try and find a game shop in the city below, if those existed here anyway. If not, he could always just recreate some game boards with sufficiently sized sheets of paper. Eventually, Luna decided that she'd had enough and would be retiring soon, so she dismissed Liam to do as he pleased. He was relieved that she did, because he had gone through the coffee fairly quickly. He had been up for over 24 hours, and to say that he was running on fumes? That would be an understatement. He wanted nothing more than to collapse in a bed and sleep the day away. So, it was with great dismay that he rounded the corner to see Queen Chrysalis waiting outside of his room, looking much the same way Luna had the night before. It's nice to see the story again, though I'm hoping the author isn't too stressed out with life and other things, because we all know how that can be. Sometimes it's quite the bitch. But let's get on to our peaceful donators. Top donators TacoCat598, Peter Coldhard, J Tin Man, Darkseid, and only one thing. Zar630, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Crazy Glare 557, Stu Hex, Will, Omicron Lyra, Chris, Michael Zaylara Moore, Fierce Pug, Dosbo, Delta Omega, Jack Hedge, Runescythe 9852, Madman Stan, Lizzie Prickett, Drake Love Dragon, Hansa Norman, Steven Bingham, Line Got 12, Sorcerer Constantine, Hudzaza, Convair, and many more amazing people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.